Episode 45, Failed Pretense. Narrow Paths for Enemies. Jiang Mai had been listless the whole time, only perking up when it was time to eat. At least Ning Shi's cooking skills were praiseworthy. Despite being just barbecue, she grilled the food so deliciously. Perhaps noticing that he was working hard, even Little Treasure, who usually ignored everyone except Ning Shi, personally handed him a skewer of lamb. Jiang Mai was genuinely touched. Moreover, he found that Ning Shi's earlier words were not an exaggeration at all. This little guy was incredibly adorable when he behaved well. No wonder Ning Shi treated him so well. It's really unfair, it's like a genetic mutation. Why did Lu Tingxiao have such a cute son? While nibbling on meat, Jiang Mai schemed in his mind. Even though he came out as a laborer this time, others wouldn't know that. Before, he used to see Lu Tingxiao flaunting his love in the group chat and social media every day. It should be his turn to show off now. Jiang Mai chuckled to himself and, sneaking to the side, took a picture of Ning Shi's back with his phone. Then, proudly posted it on his moments, having a great time on a trip. With Lu Tingxiao's sharp eyes, he would definitely recognize whose silhouette it was. Soon, the comments from his friends started pouring in. Wow. The girl is spot on. Just by looking at her back, you can tell she's beautiful. Jiang Mai, you scoundrel bringing your date here without showing us. Give us a front view. Don't be stingy. Why does she look so young? Is she even of legal age? Jiang Mai, you're not up to anything illegal, are you? After a while, Lu Jingli also appeared. Whoa! The barbecue looks delicious. There are even chicken wings and grilled fish. Little rascal, enjoying delicious food without inviting your uncle. Lu Jingli's focus was indeed unusual. After waiting for a while, the person he was truly waiting for finally appeared. The latest information showed that Lu Tingxiao had just replied to him. Jiang Mai quickly opened it to see what Lu Tingxiao had replied. After reading it, his face turned black. Lu Tingxiao replied with, Don't let little treasure eat too much, he's been gaining a bit of weight recently. Dot. Damn it. How did Lu Tingxiao know that little treasure was here too? Jiang Mai repeatedly checked the photo he posted. And finally, he discovered the problem. Little Treasure's figure was reflected in the river in the photo. Damn, Lu Tingxia's eyesight was too sharp. Jiang Mai's attempt at showing off failed miserably. Like a defeated rooster, he slumped back and saw Ning Shi making a phone call. Who are you talking to? Jiang Mai casually asked. Ziji Jia, of course, Ning Shi replied. After becoming a bit more familiar, Ning Shi decisively changed her address from Lin Jia to the more affectionate Zizi Jia. Jiang Mai took a sip of juice. Straight or gay? My manager, Lin Zizi. It's the Zhi in Ling Zhi, okay? As soon as she finished speaking, Jiang Mai sprayed out all the juice he had just drunk. Who did you say? Lin Zizi. The manager of Lang Manyun. Haven't you seen my press conference that day? Your reaction is so slow. Ning Shi disdainfully looked at him. Fuck. Anyway, I know the result. Why would I watch it? Lin Zizi, why does it have to be Lin Zizi? Jiang Mai had been feeling irritated since he found out about Ning Shi signing with Shengshir. He casually checked the situation without paying much attention. Who would have thought that Lu Tingxiao had buried such a big bomb for him? Ning Shi didn't understand. Why can't it be Lin Zizi? Why are you so excited? Is she your ex-girlfriend or something? Seeing Jiang Mai's strangely silent expression, Ning Shi snapped her fingers. Oh, my smart brain, did I guess it right? Don't talk to me. I need some quiet time. In this round, Jiang Mai suffered a complete defeat. Strictly speaking, it was as if the bugle for war had just sounded, and he realized that he had stepped on a landmine, making it impossible for him to move forward. The enemy was too ruthless. Ning Shi spoke with an unaccepting tone, I really didn't expect it. Even someone like Sister Zizi would have moments of blindness. Jiang Mai stared at her, what kind of talk is that? What do you mean by moments of blindness? It's you who's blind. Even someone like Su Han, you can see through. Ning Shi sighed, ah, it's all because we were young back then. It's hard to tell if it's a person or a dog. You? Jiang Mai was so angry that he couldn't speak. In the end, he said angrily, now you know how cunning and treacherous that guy Lu Tingxiao is, right? To guard against me, he even used such shameless tactics. After saying this, he expected to see Ning Shi's regretful expression. Instead, he saw her propping up her chin, smiling foolishly. Boss is truly wise and martial, strategically planning and preparing in advance for victory thousands of miles away. 
Jiang Lai's face turned as black as the bottom of a pot. Ning Shi, you are beyond redemption. Suddenly, Ning Shi leaned over menacingly, looking mischievous. Hey, what's going on between you and Sister Zizi? Judging by your expression, it seems more than just an ex-girlfriend, right? This guy Jiang Mai couldn't possibly be so wary of a mere ex-girlfriend. Mind your own business. Jiang Mai said irritably, then hesitated and asked, What did she say when she called you just now? Ning Shi shrugged, nothing much. She informed me that the scriptwriter is revising the script, and will start filming in about half a month. Ming Ji also told me. After the modification, the storyline of Meng Changa and Sun Huanqing will be more prominent. As for Ning Xuelua and Zhao Sizhou, whether there will be replacements is still unclear. However, with Lu Tingxiao protecting you like this, I guess there will definitely be replacements. Jiang Wei's tone was slightly sour. Ning Shi shook her head, no, if Lu Tingxiao is really considering it from my perspective, he won't replace anyone. Because, for me, the most enjoyable revenge is to completely defeat Ning Xuelua in the drama, making her my foil. That would be the most satisfying way for me. As soon as she finished speaking, a piece of the latest entertainment news popped up on Ning Shi's phone. She subscribed to some important entertainment news, and every time there was fresh information, it would pop up on its own. After reading it, Ning Shi couldn't help but raise the corners of her mouth, looking like a teenage girl in love. Jiang Mai was taken aback by her expression and, with suspicion, leaned over to take a look. Then he saw the entertainment news revealing that Xingxi had just issued a new announcement. Lu's group had replenished the funds withdrawn by Ning's International and Starlight Entertainment. This Tianxia project would now be fully taken over by Xingxi Entertainment. Due to filming progress considerations, the originally planned roles would remain unchanged. Seeing the tacit understanding between Ning Shi and Lu Tingxiao and their mutual understanding, Jiang Mai felt a sense of blockage in his heart. I think you've completely fallen in and don't even realize it. Do you really think you can resist liking Lu Tingxiao? Lying on the grass, Ning Shi picked a piece of dogtail grass and put it in her mouth casually. Who says you have to be together if you like someone? How many people who like each other end up together? This state is already good enough. The best outcome is to go back to being friends and confidants. Even if it's the worst case scenario, forgetting each other is not a bad thing. Memories can forever stay in the most beautiful moments. A half month vacation couldn't be wasted. The next day, Ning Shi continued to take Little Bun out for some fun. Miss Shi, should we wait for young master to finish work before you go out together? The old butler couldn't stand it anymore and tentatively started playing the role of a matchmaker. Ning Shi scratched her head. No need to wait. He's too busy. We'll go by ourselves. She deliberately chose a time when Lu Tingxiao wasn't around. How could she possibly wait for him to finish work? Well, let them follow then. Young master instructed that little master's safety should not be taken lightly. The old butler pointed to the three black suited and sunglasses wearing bodyguards nearby. This request was reasonable. Ning Shi naturally had to agree. This way, she wouldn't have to find Jiang Mai to do the hard work. Why did she feel like Lu Tingxiao did this on purpose? Today, Ning Shi's itinerary included buying toys and clothes for Little Bun. Of course, since she hadn't started working yet, the card she used was still Lu Tingxiao's. While shopping at the mall, she unexpectedly found a newly opened children's clothing store with adorable and trendy outfits. Thus, she completely entered the mode of buy, buy, buy. Darling, darling, this set looks good too. Quickly go inside and try it on. Little Bun nodded and obediently went into the fitting room. While Ning Shi was waiting for Little Bun to change clothes, she suddenly saw two familiar figures passing by outside the store. Ning Xuelua intimately held Su Han's hand, and the two were casually strolling while chatting. Wow, the children's clothes in this store are so cute. Brother Han, let's go in and take a look. Next month is Fang Lin's son's birthday. Why don't we buy him a set of clothes as a gift? Sure. Xuan responded expressionlessly. Have you ever seen Fang Lin's son? He's so white and chubby, really cute. Brother Han, do you think if we have a son in the future, he'll be just as cute? Ning Xuelua asked coyly. Probably. Su Han showed little interest and gave a perfunctory answer. Ning Xuelua looked disappointed. Brother Han, are you still angry with me? I've publicly apologized on Weibo, and you've personally heard Kai Jing's explanation. As for that phone call. I was really drunk because you suddenly ignored me. I spoke without thinking. 
I regret it so much. Little Shi, Ning Shuelua was explaining when she suddenly heard Su Han mention Little Shi. Following his gaze, she saw Ning Shi standing near a row of clothes racks. Sister, Ning Shuelua's eyes welled up with tears. She immediately rushed over, grabbed Ning Shi's hand, and said excitedly, Sister, I finally get to see you. I've been wanting to apologize to you in person, but you've been ignoring me and not answering my calls. I didn't know where you lived. Back then, when everyone asked me, I said that I didn't believe you did that. In the end, it was just a misunderstanding. I know you wouldn't do such a thing. Now that the truth is out, the damage has already been done. Although I'm also a victim, this incident was caused by me. I'm the one who implicated you, so I'm really sorry. You can hit me or scold me as you like, as long as you can calm down. Ning Shuelua's words were sincere and flowed smoothly. It even seemed like Ning Shi, who was in the right, was bullying her. Ning Shi didn't respond with her usual sharp sarcasm. Instead, she looked somewhat helpless and tired as she glanced in Su Han's direction. The look Su Han gave was like a faint but persistent itch in Su Han's heart, making him hastily pull Ning Shuelua closer. Shuelua, calm down. Ning Shuelua hadn't noticed Ning Shi's subtle actions. Tears streamed down her face as she spoke, Brother Han, please help me talk to sister. You understand how tormented and self-blaming I've been these past few days. I truly hope she can forgive me. Otherwise, I... Su Han looked at the woman crying bitterly in his arms, and eventually softened his stance. Little she, I'm sorry. Shuelua is genuinely remorseful about this matter. Ning Shuelua's face suddenly broke into a triumphant smile, crying even more sadly on the surface but secretly anticipating Ning Shi's explosion. In the past, every time she begged for forgiveness, Ning Shi would definitely show an extremely agitated response, saying whatever nasty things she could think of, making Su Han dislike her more each time. This time should be no different. Ning Shi wearily rubbed her forehead and sighed. Forget it, Ning Shuelua, I've seen your apology and received it. Since it was a misunderstanding, let's just forget about it. I forgive you. What, what did you say? Ning Shuelua's face instantly changed color, full of disbelief. Su Han, on the other hand, felt relieved. Shuelua, you can rest assured now. Ning Shuelua couldn't say a word, her face turning liver colored. On the other side, the fitting room door opened, and little Bun, now dressed, walked out. Ning Shi's hypocritical mask immediately showed a hint of warmth. She smiled and walked over to pick up little Bun. Then, she said to the shop assistant, I'll take all the clothes we tried on just now. I'll wear this one. Sure, sure, let me help you with the billing. The shop assistant responded with a smile. Ning Shi nodded slightly at Su Han to bid farewell and then walked away with little Bun. The black-suited bodyguards behind them settled the bill and followed along with the numerous shopping bags. This scene left Ning Shuelua dumbfounded. Afterward, an extremely excited expression appeared on her face. Could it be true what Fang Lin and Xian Xian said? When they told me they saw Ning Shi buying children's clothes in a mall, I didn't believe it. Sister, could she really be the kept woman of some wealthy old man, bearing his child? Unfortunately, Ning Shi walked too fast just now. She didn't get a clear look at the child's face and didn't have time to secretly take pictures for evidence. Shuelua, don't speak nonsense. Shuan immediately interrupted her sternly. He looked at Ning Shi's direction with a complex expression and said, I've seen this child once. Little she said he's just a friend's son. Ning Shuelua was in a daze. After a while, she revealed an expression of extreme excitement. Brother Han, you're too naive. Can she treat a friend's child so well? Look at her, with bodyguards following her and swiping a black card. A family with that kind of wealth must have plenty of nannies and bodyguards. Does she really need to take care of a child? A struggle and hesitation appeared between Su Han's eyebrows. Then, as if thinking of something, he spoke with determination, Shuelua, in my heart, little she is like my real sister. If you insult her, it's an insult to me. In the future, don't let me hear such words again. Others might suspect her, but we cannot, understood? Ning Shuelua never expected that Su Han's attitude toward Ning Shi would change so much after this incident. Damn it. What kind of love potion did Ning Shi give him that day at the hospital? Su Han suddenly believed her so much that he couldn't even listen to her words. Sorry, Brother Han, I know I was wrong. I won't do it again. Ning Shuelua gritted her teeth and said. It seemed like this incident had stirred up guilt in Su Han's heart, 
making him less likely to doubt Ning Shi easily. However, so what? Since he didn't believe what others said, he could be made to witness it with his own eyes. He would believe it then. Finding Ning Shi's flaws was way too easy. She had an unclear relationship with Jiang Muyue before, and now she had added a child. It was becoming more interesting. But for now, she would endure it and wait for Su Han's guilt to fade before making her move. Downstairs in the mall, Ning Shi, carrying Little Bun, was preparing to go home when she suddenly realized their car was gone. Uh, where's our car? Ning Shi looked puzzled. Could it have been stolen? But how was that possible? The driver was still inside. One of the bodyguards following them replied, Miss, our car has left. The boss called and said he had finished work and would pick you up. Ah. Uh, Ning Shi was taken aback, hurriedly saying, Um, let's just go by ourselves. What if he has to work overtime or is delayed by something? Before she could finish her sentence, a black Maybach smoothly pulled up. The back window slowly lowered, revealing an expressionless face. Done shopping? Ning Shi's face stiffened as she nodded. She hadn't seen him for two whole days, as she deliberately kept a low profile to avoid contact with Lu Tingxiao as much as possible, even though they were living under the same roof. Going home? Yeah, yeah. Ning Shi opened the car door and put Little Bun inside, then went to open the front passenger door to sit in the front. However, one of the bodyguards approached hesitantly. Miss, it's not safe for you to sit in the front. Let me sit there. You can sit in the back, it's spacious. Oh. Ning Shi conceded once again. In the back, despite having Little Bun as a buffer, Ning Shi still tried to sit close to the car door. Lu Tingxiao's attitude was as usual. His knees held a laptop as he quickly typed away, focused on his work. Ning Shi sighed in relief at the sight. However, ten minutes later, it seemed Lu Tingxiao had finished his work. He put down the laptop, lifted the drowsy Little Bun onto his lap, placed the laptop on the other side and then naturally moved one position closer to Ning Shi. The familiar cool breath suddenly invaded her safety zone, making Ning Shi's entire body feel like it was about to explode. Subconsciously, she leaned towards the door, her face almost sticking to the window. Xiao Shi. Lu Ting Xiao's voice sounded in her ear. Ah! What's wrong? Ning Shi turned her head. Lu Ting Xiao looked at her and spoke in a calm but questioning tone, Are you avoiding me? Ha ha! Hey, how could I? Why would I avoid you? I was just looking at the beautiful sunset outside. It's quite lovely. Just admiring the view. Ning Shi quickly shifted back. But at this moment, the driver in the front did something strange. He suddenly made a sharp turn, forcing Ning Shi's entire body to tilt towards Lu Tingxiao. Frowning slightly, Lu Tingxiao reached out an arm, protecting her shoulder, and didn't let go. Sorry, boss, a car suddenly cut in front just now. The assistant, Cheng Feng, reported from the front. Okay, drive more slowly. Lu Tingxiao said, and give yourself a raise. Cheng Feng responded, yes, boss. From the butler to the bodyguards to the assistant, why did it feel like everyone was helping Lu Tingxiao gang up on her, 